English Espanol. Some time ago I made a video to show the advertisement I print um, when I go out. Um, hace algún tiempo uh, he hecho también un video para enseñar el tipo de publicidad que llevo cuando salgo de casa. And these last weeks, now I'm since la these last weeks, I tell people to watch my video number 64. Y últimamente digo a la gente con lo que hablo que miren el video, video número 64. And some neighbors, uh, anyway, um. Just want to mention I'm living here in Gran Canaria in the south of the island and it's very touristic. I just go uh, <laughs> out of my door and see many, many people. Bueno, yo vivo aquí en Gran Canaria, en el sur de la isla, y uh, muy turístico cuando salgo de casa, un montón de gente. Till now I have talked with very few people about this uh, secret topic of Let's Talk FE, hashtag Flat Earth. Hasta ahora he hablado con muy poca gente sobre ese tema secreto de Tierra Plana. So just now, yesterday I met my neighbor and asked him if he had watched that video number 64 already. Así, ayer eh, me encontré por la calle con mi vecino y le pregunté si ya ha mirado ese video número 64. And he answered yes, he did, but um, he can't imagine um, very well um, how this would look like. Él ha contestado que sí, que lo miró, pero no se puede muy bien imaginar cómo eh, se puede imaginar esto. So I explained him, uh, have you seen the flag of the United Nations with at the North Pole in the middle? Luego le expliqué, mira, has visto la bandera de Naciones Unidas con el polo, polo norte en el, en el medio. And of course the sun much nearer and going in circles around the flat earth. Por supuesto el sol mucho más cerca dando vueltas encima de tierra plana. Of course the outer edge uh, Antarctica surrounding the flat earth. Y por supuesto rodeando Antártida eh, the topic of Antarctica is very important but uh, this time I want to talk uh, about something else. El tema de Antártida es muy importante, pero esta vez quiero hablar sobre un tema diferente. Sorry, maybe the wind, you will hear the wind is very windy here near the sea, dunas de más palomas de Gran Canaria. Pero no que tal vez hoy es el viento, ay, estoy aquí, dunas de más palomas de Gran Canaria, a veces bastante viento. Actually, I'm very focused on the topic of Let's Talk FE, but talking with my neighbor, um, we talked a little about, uh, because he is Muslim, Islam. No, últimamente estoy muy concentrada en el tema de Let's Talk FE, Tierra Plana. Pero hablando con él, uh, hablamos con el, sobre el tema de Islam porque él es musulmán. And some time ago I made a video mix um, about Islam and Mark of the Beast from Armageddon News. 
hace algún tiempo hice un video mix sobre el tema de la marca de la bestia Islam y del canal Armageddon News. And researching the subject, I found another very good video. Investigando más este tema, me encontré con otro video muy interesante. It has even subtitles in Spanish. Hasta tiene subtítulos en español. So I will paste that video after that video I mentioned before. Así que voy a pegar este video después del video que he mencionado antes. But before both videos, I just want to paste a short video of about five minutes about that secret topic. Let's talk F.E. Flat Earth. Pero antes de estos dos videos, voy a pegar un video cortito de cinco minutos sobre el tema secreto de Let's Talk F.E. Tierra Plana. Uh, by the way, just want to mention something of a video I just watched before. De paso, solo quiero mencionar una cosita de un video que he visto antes. With Mark K. Sargent, an interview with somebody, I don't remember exactly. Un interview con Mark K. Sargent que con otra persona que no me acuerdo exactamente. He mentioned that, uh, did you notice all these uh, old pictures of the moon, uh, the moon landing, that you don't see any stars in space. It's completely dark. Did you notice that? Te has enterado mirando estas fotos, imágenes in antiguas de, de la luna que no hay estrellas en el espacio. No hay estrellas, está todo oscuro. Esto, <laughs> esto huele muy mal. And in addition, did you know that they taped over the original uh, footage of the moon. <laughs> this sounds really, really planned. Y has oído que han sobregrabado los, eh, los videos originales de la luna. <laughs> ¡Qué equivocación! Oh, sorry, we didn't notice this is the original footage of the moon. It's like... <laughs> Sounds like sometimes when I made uh, videos, a little bit funny editing, and I wrote this happens when cats produce videos. <laughs> Filmmaking, by the way, I have the Twitter account. Filmmaking V. One second. Anyway, uh, all my Twitter accounts and the last section about uh, YouTube. Esto suena como que alguna vez hice algún video un poco el montaje raro y escribí, mira, esto, es pa esto pasa cuando gatos eh, producen videos. <laughs> anyway, cats are, are more careful to not over uh, record uh, <laughs> the moon landing, <laughs> the moon show. <laughs> Pero creo que gatos serían uh, más cuidadosos de no sobregrabar los videos originales de la luna. And it's el espectáculo de la luna. And I want to mention that what I like especially about Mark Sargent's video, videos on his YouTube channel. 
he almost every video puts into Creative Commons license like I do. So remixing aloud. Lo que me gusta especialmente del canal de YouTube de Mark Sargent es que él pone casi todos sus videos cuando es posible en licencia Creative Commons. Así que está permitido de hacer remezclas. Maybe you have noticed that I don't uh, monetize my videos. I just put uh, this QR code of Bitcoin in the beginning and in the end of my videos. So donations welcome. Tal vez te has enterado que no estoy monetizando mis videos. Solo pongo el QR, QR, código QR de Bitcoin en el principio y al final de mis videos. Así que donaciones están bienvenidas. And I think one of the best ways to learn about Bitcoin is my idea, my idea about Hashtag BTC4 Y creo que una de las mejores formas para aprender sobre Bitcoin es mi idea de Hashtag BTC4 Maybe you notice that I paste this video almost always after my new videos in the end Tal vez te has enterado que casi siempre pego este video al final de mis nuevos videos. Por eso me gusta también ese título de video mix. That's why I like the title of video mix too, so I put any kind of themes together, <laughs> mash up. Así que de esta forma tengo permiso de mezclar los temas. Remix. Maybe you now in my next video I want to put a different background design. The same audio voice but just a different background design. Tal vez en mi próximo video pongo... Um, un diferente diseño, un diseño diferente de atrás, eh, usando el mismo, la, la misma grabación de audio, solo diferente design. And then maybe later I'll create a complete new video, almost the same idea like hashtag BTC4 but instead of four, only two, two years. Tal vez uh, más adelante voy a producir un nuevo video. La misma idea de hashtag BTC4, pero a lugar de cuatro años, solo dos años. And the design of this New video, especially when the hashtag sharing is caring, hashtag BTC4. Y el diseño, diseño pienso utilizar especialmente el hashtag sharing is caring. Ha sido como compartir es cuidar. Uh, when I talked with that neighbor, I I remember he said write a book or <laughs> who reads books in these days you must pay the people that they read your book. Ahora recuerdo cuando hablé con el vecino dice ah porque cuando escribo un libro mira quien lee un libro libro hay que pagar la gente para que lea tu libro. But then I said, um, what I should do is maybe show more my face in my videos, maybe uh, 
if people pay more attention. Bueno, yo dije lo que sí tal vez debería hacer es entrenar más, más mi cara. Tal vez la gente presta más atención. But then the next thing I said, oh, I'm so tired of especially men coming uh, without invitation in front of my door and start to scream and bang on my door. Pero lo siguiente, dije, mira, estoy tan cansada que vengan casi siempre hombres delante de mi puerta sin invitación y empiezan a gritar y dar golpes en mi puerta. Jude. Ah, oh, you want to come into my apartment? You buy my apartment, then you can stay there forever and ever and ever. ¿Quieres entrar en mi apartamento? Compra mi apartamento, luego puedes quedarte para siempre y siempre y siempre en mi apartamento. Ore. On the other hand, now, just uh, one, two weeks ago now, the, the Bitcoin dog blocked me for the third time. De otro lado, el, el perro de Bitcoin. Bitcoin dog me ha bloqueado por tercera vez en Twitter. So my advice, you better don't block people because people can get really angry and I don't do that but many pe many men would come in front of your door and start screaming especially with, oh, <laughs> at night or well, así que mi consejo que mejor no vayas bloqueando gente en Twitter, Internet, porque se cabrean y hay hombres eh, cuando se cabrean son mucho mejor que una mujer como yo. Vienen delante de tu puerta a empezar a gritar y, y, y qué más cosas. So I should mention that here in Canarias are living um, many people from Morocco. Debería mencionar que aquí en Canarias uh, viven mucha gente de Marruecos. You know that Canarias belongs to Spain, but it's uh, near the Sahara, Africa. Ya sabéis que um, Canarias pertenece a España, pero está ahí abajo, cerca de Sahara, África. And you know, of course, that most people in Morocco are a Muslim. Y ya sabéis que uh, la mayoría de la gente en Marruecos son musulmán, Islam. So I have often a small talk in the streets with um, Muslim people too. Así que a menudo también hablo ahí por la calle con muchos musulmanes. And when this video is finished, I'll tell them to watch this video, especially about Islam. Y cuando tengo terminado este video, voy a decirles que miren especialmente este video sobre el Islam. So now I'll paste these two videos. Okay, first, as I said before, uh, just that five minute video about Let's Talk FE, the secret topic of Flat Earth. And then these two videos about Islam. Así que a continuación, primero el video cortito de cinco minutos sobre Let's Talk FI. Tema secreto de Tierra Plana. Y después el te los dos videos sobre el tema del Islam. When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from Earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon, the flat earth subject became viral online. 
And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the Flat Earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment. But maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario. And I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years. And once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the Flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curved barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind, and the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even the low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or disprove prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon.
This is Armageddon News. On the agenda today, we discuss the mark of the beast, its connection to worship and trade, what the consequences are of taking it, and its startling links to Islamic scripture. Good day. A former Islamic terrorist, named Walid Shubat, who has become a born-again Christian, has discovered a connection between the name of Allah and the 666. He explains that the Greek letters, XES, which John wrote in Greek, are actually the Arabic phrase, Bishmillah, which means, in the name of Allah. He says that what John saw, were actually Arabic letters, which John could not read, but which bore a resemblance to the Greek alphabet in which John wrote. It would have been pointless to write symbols of another language, which could not be read by the Greek readers of Revelation. So it is very possible that the Arabic Bishmila is indeed what John saw, and recorded in Greek letters. The first symbol of 666, are the Muslim crossed swords, the X character, a symbol of Islam and Jihad, which are often used by Muslims, on flags and military symbols. Notice the handles on the swords. The middle, E, symbol, is an Islamic symbol called Bishmila, Arabic for Allah. Or, in the name of Allah. When you turn the Bishmila on its side and place it in a mirror, it forms the same middle Greek character, as written by John. Notice the line drawn, above Allah. And the hook, on its end. The line, it is part of the word Allah, it is not an underline. Notice the same hook in the line drawn by John. It matches the line, in the name Allah exactly. The third character is the Greek character stigma, which means mark, or badge of servitude. The Greek XES or 666, has been noted not just in the Bishmila, but also in the Shahada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is what the Quran states, will be written on the badge of servitude, on the Day of Judgment. The XES, has also been noted, on an Islamic Chechen flag, which bears the crossed swords and the name Alu Akbar, meaning God is greater. This flag bears a striking resemblance to the Greek XES, as written by John. Even bearing the line, above the letter E, in the name, Allah. It has also been noted, that in the Arabic calligraphy form, the name, Alu Akbar, contains three sixes, which can be clearly seen. Therefore a direct connection, between the name, Allahu Akbar and the number 666 can be perceived. The Bible speaks about taking the mark, on the forehead or right hand. It has been pointed out, that Muslims are already wearing marks, on their foreheads and arms, as Islamic banners of protest, and jihad. So Muslims have already been conditioned to take the mark, as a symbol of their belief. The Greek word sharagma, used for mark, means a stamp, an imprinted mark. So a follower of the Antichrist, will have a stamp on their body, or on some form of badge, to be placed on the forehead or arm. In John's time, the use for sharagma was reserved for slaves in what was called, a badge of servitude. So, it's a badge, that declares slavery, and ownership by the master. And his followers, use it to demonstrate allegiance to this master. This would fit Islam, since according to Islamic theology, Muslims are slaves of Allah. And Islam is the religion of, submission. Take a look at the many different Islamic headbands, which have been created, for a Muslim to wear, as a sign of their faith. There is a very interesting headband, which actually has the XES and the name of Allah, written on it, with crossed swords. They call it, the Shahid, headband. Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, tells us exactly what the name Allah, really means. The name Allah is actually the Hebrew word, for curse, or oath. Strong's Dictionary says it's, an imprecation, curse, cursing, execration, oath, or swearing. So, Allah is actually the word, for a curse. And amazingly, it was the serpent in the Garden of Eden, which became the first being, to be cursed by God. Therefore a connection, between the serpent, being cursed, and Allah, which means, a curse, is very surprising. It would appear that by wearing the name Allah, you are in point of fact, 
wearing a curse. Which would explain why the name Allah, is in the shape, of the cursed serpent. In the Bible, Revelation 12 9 describes Satan as the great dragon, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan. Then the book of Revelation, goes on to speak about the great dragon Satan. Giving his throne to the Antichrist. And a group of people, worshipping the dragon, which has given them this Antichrist king. Revelation 13 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who, is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? What people would knowingly worship the dragon Satan? The answer is none. These people have no idea they are actually worshipping Satan. But they are shouting his praises in the streets, because the dragon has given them, a king. What type of people, would actually stand in the street, praising their God for giving them an empire and strong king, that no one dare make war against? How do Muslims praise their God? By shouting Allahu Akbar. This is how they worship the dragon Satan. By shouting Allah is great. The Bible doesn't just call Satan the dragon but, the great, dragon. The great, is actually part of the name of Allah. But in the Bible the great, is part of the name for the dragon. Even the whore of Babylon who rides the beast, has a name written on her head. Mystery Babylon, the great. A city that thinks she is great. The word for great is Akbar, and is indeed a boast, which only the Muslims cry out. The other meaning of the Hebrew word Allah, or curse, is an oath. A binding oath. As we'll discover later, a binding oath, is exactly what Allah requires, from his followers. In the Garden of Eden, while speaking to the serpent, God gave us a very profound prophecy, concerning the end days. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours, will always be enemies. Her offspring, will crush your head. And you will bite her offspring's heel. God spoke of hatred between, the serpent Satan, and the woman Israel. Then he speaks about two seeds. The seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. The seed of the woman, whose heel was bitten, by the serpent, was the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, which was crucified having nails driven through his feet, which left him with two puncture marks. As if he had been bitten by a serpent. But who is the seed of the serpent? I believe it is speaking, about the promised son of the serpent, a false messiah. To find out, who these two opposing races are, we don't have to look very far. We know that the woman is Israel. Which gave birth to the messiah. We only need now look, for the race of people, which according to this verse hates Israel, like the serpent does. This race is none other than the Muslims. But wait, God, is describing that a seed, will come from the serpents. This seed of the serpent, is describing the Antichrist, which will come from the people, which Satan has chosen, because of their hatred for Israel. Just like Jesus, was the promised seed of the woman, Israel. So Islam is also waiting, for Allah, to send them a promised Messiah. Called the Imam Mahdi, Islam's twelfth Imam. This Mahdi, is the seed of the serpent, Allah. And this Mahdi, will become the Caliph and King of Islam. Uniting all, the divided Islamic lands, which were given a deadly head wound, when the Caliph of the Ottoman Empire, was dissolved. Causing their empire to break up. This Caliph will unite the Islamic lands, and will restore the office, of the Caliph. Which the Bible describes, as the deadly head wound, being healed. And all the Islamic world will wander after the beast. He will also be the one, to wage war against Jesus Christ, in the Battle of Armageddon. A startling connection, between the mark of the beast and Islamic belief about the last days, has been discovered. Amazingly, and in keeping perfectly with what the Bible predicted so long ago, regarding the beast and his mark, the badge of servitude, is in fact an Islamic commandment from Muhammad himself. Who said, Allah, will save a man from my nation, above all creation on judgment day. In front of him will be laid ninety-nine registers, for his sins. Every register, is as long as the eye can see. Then he is asked, do you deny any of these? 
Then he says, No, O oh Lord. Then he is asked, Do you have any excuse? He responds, No, Lord. Then he is told, You have but one good deed, and there will be no condemnation for you today. A badge is brought forth. Scrolled across it are the words, No God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Then he asked to bring forth his deeds. He asks, O oh Lord, what is this badge that is with these registers? He is told, You will receive no condemnation. The deeds are put on one hand, and the badge in the other. Then the registers will float, and the badge will outweigh the registers. Tamathi 2639. The badge of servitude is the Islamic counterfeit of Jesus Christ, which Muhammad claimed would pardon the wearer of all their sins on Judgment Day. To sum it up, the name of the beast, along with variations of the name of Allah, will be made compulsory, as a sign of submission on the right arm or forehead. Islam is submission and allegiance to a foreign god, the badge being spoken of, by Muhammad is the Shahada, which is blasphemous, and is worn by Muslims as a badge on the foreheads. The Shahada is the Muslim declaration of belief. It states, there is no god but Allah, and Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. If this jihad is part of the mark of the beast, those who take it, will be forever denying Jesus, as the Son of God, and sealing themselves to Islam. Which is the only religion, which actually denies Jesus, was the Son of God, in its scriptures. The Bible mentions this as one of the prerequisites of the Antichrist and his followers. That he will deny Jesus as the Son of God. 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar? but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Denying that Jesus is the Son of Father God, is a Muslim belief. They state it is blasphemous, that God, could have had, a son. So wearing any mark, or badge of Islam, would be to officially deny Jesus Christ, the only hope of salvation. These things meet the biblical requirements for the mark of the beast. The only thing left to be instituted, is the official government mark. Issued by the Islamic Empire. A mark, without which, no one will be able to buy, or sell, unless they have shown allegiance to Islam. There will be no hope of salvation, for those, who take, that mark. Even the part of the Bible that predicted the beast will mark the foreheads is in the Quran and the Hadith. Al-Ard, literally the beast of the earth, is an Islamic version of the account of the beast of the earth, in Revelation 13:11, But unlike the Bible, in which the beast is evil, the Quran, gives him a holy mission to revive Islam, and mark the foreheads, of all true Muslim believers. According to Islamic tradition, the beast emerges in the last days. The Quran states, and when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth, a beast of the earth to speak unto them. Because mankind had not faith in our revelations, Quran 2782. The Prophet of Islam declared, The first signs that will come is the rising of the sun, from the place of his setting, and emergence of the beast, upon the people. Whichever of these two occurs before the other, then the other is right behind it. Why do Muslims mark their foreheads with badges of submission to Allah? It comes from their belief that the end days are near. Their Quran states, the task of the beast, will be to distinguish the believers from the non-believers. With Prophet Moses' staff, it the beast, will draw a line, on the forehead of every Muslim believer. Whereby his face, will become bright and illuminous, and with a ring of Solomon. It will seal the nose of every non-believer. Whereby his whole face will become black. Thus there will be complete distinction, between the Muslim, and non-Muslim. So that if many parties sit at a dinner table, the Muslim and non-Muslim will be distinguished. So Muslims describe, that the false prophet, or beast of the earth will mark their foreheads with the staff of Moses. The staff of Moses, was used to perform the miracles and plagues of Egypt. It was also Moses' staff, which turned into a snake. Now the Muslims, are describing being marked on the forehead, with the serpent staff of Moses a staff which brought curses upon Egypt, and will bring a curse upon those who take its mark. From this we see, the Muslims are describing a man with great power and a worker of miraculous miracles. 
but the Bible says that this beast of the earth's power will be the working of Satan, and not God. Can you imagine a Muslim's shock? When they study the Bible. Muslims are taught that a beast would come out of the earth, and he would mark the foreheads of all true Muslims. Do you see how Satan, has turned everything upside down for Muslims? Muslims are being taught, to desire the mark of the beast. Earlier, we discussed the name, Allah. Not only, that it meant curse, but also that it meant an oath. This is because Allah, requires all his followers to take an oath of allegiance. In the early days of Muhammad's career, he often asked those who had expressed a desire to follow him, to make a pledge of allegiance or submission to him. This pledge is known as bayah. It is an outward oath, or pledge promising allegiance and complete submission, to the emir or caliph. After Muhammad died, this practice of making a pledge, was carried on, under the caliphs. The Muslims would make a pledge of allegiance to the caliph, and likewise the caliph would make a pledge of allegiance to Allah. To rule strictly according to Islamic law. Many Islamists including, Adnan Oktar, often speak about the restoration of the Islamic caliphate, in the Middle East. They also mention the Pledge of Allegiance or Bayah. Under a Muslim empire, it is mandatory, for every Muslim to take this Pledge of Allegiance, and to submit by binding themselves, to the Caliph, as their master. The Arabic name for this pledge, is Bayah, which shockingly translates, as the word sell. Muslims are well aware of this, that by taking this pledge, they are selling themselves, to the Caliph, as a slave. The Bible says, Revelation 14 9. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment, ascends up for ever and ever. This worship of the Antichrist, or his emblem, describes perfectly the Pledge of Allegiance to the Caliph as Master. Once people have worshipped him, they will receive his mark to show their submission, and will wear it proudly, on their foreheads or hands. The first Ahmadiyya Caliph, issued a warning. To those wishing, to offer their bayah at his hand. By saying, if you want to do bayah at my hand, be very clear, what bayah means. Bayah means to sell, yourselves. A man gives up everything, and that is why Allah, has called this man, Abd. Meaning one who worships. Notice that it is made clear, that Bayah, is worship. So when the Bible says that people will worship the beast, Bayah, is by Islamic definition. Worship. It now makes perfect sense, why the Greek word for mark, which is sharagma in the book of Revelation, means a badge of servitude, as a slave. For people are going to sell their souls to the Antichrist, and receive God's judgment, of fire and damnation for eternity, without rest. Unfortunately Islam has deceived Muslims, into wanting this mark and portraying it as something holy, rather than a seal, which will damn their souls, to eternal fire and suffering. Like anxious children, many very eager Islamists look forward to the day, when all Islamic citizens, of the regions and lands under the Caliphate, will be required to make a pledge to the Caliph. According to Islamic tradition, those who do not make this pledge will die the death of an idolater. The Islamic tradition states, one who withdraws his hand from the obedience to the ruler, Emir, will find no argument in his defense, when he stand before Allah, on the day of judgment. And one who dies without having bound himself, by an oath of allegiance, Bayah, to an Emir, will die the death, of one belonging to the days of Jahil Yair. Pre-Islamic days of ignorance, and idolatry. Similar to the Antichrist, Islamists are already planning to kill those, who refuse to give allegiance to the Emir, or Caliph as their spiritual leader. The evidence of the mistreatment of Christians and Jews in the Islamic system is immense. But it will of course only increase in the days to come. This is what the Bible warned, when it stated that whoever did not worship the beast, and receive his mark would be killed. It's no coincidence, that the Bible states, the method of killing will be beheading. For that is the system of capital punishment found in Islamic countries. Which shows us definitively, that the Antichrist will indeed rise, and begin his global war, from the Middle East, 
and not the EU, as has been believed. Revelation 24 And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, a thousand years. The mark of the beast, will be visible on the forehead or hand, as a means of discerning people, who have not yet submitted, to the king of the Middle East. The mark is directly linked to the worship and submission to the beast. The means, of being able to buy, and sell, is only a secondary result. The main purpose of the mark, is to be a visible sign, to distinguish those who have worshipped the beast, versus those who have not. The worship of the beast and the mark go hand in hand, as soon as people have worshipped they will receive the mark of their submission. Seeing that the Antichrist's empire will be Islamic, he will enforce a law that, without the mark people will not be allowed to buy, or sell. So if you went to a grocery store, and the cashier didn't see the mark, on your forehead or hand, showing that you submitted to the beast and his empire, the cashier would not be allowed to take your money. The book of Revelation does not say, that money will not exist, only that buying and selling, would be prohibited without the mark. God is concerned with the worship and submission to the beast and the sealing of oneself, with the name of a false god. It's the submission, to the Islamic Antichrist, and the worship, of the empire's image, which sends people to hell, not the buying and selling. Once people have sealed themselves, with the mark of the Islamic empire, they will share the same fate, as the Antichrist, which the Bible states is the lake of fire. By taking this mark, they will be denying Yahweh, and his son, Jesus Christ, and sealing themselves with the name of this false god, and a false belief system which denies Jesus Christ, as the Son of God. There will be no forgiveness of this sin. Only the terrible fate, which has been foretold, and eternal suffering. The Bible states, the false prophet will perform wondrous miracles. Even making what seems like holy fire, descend from heaven. And by these miracles, he will lead millions astray, into submitting and worshipping this Middle East king, who claims to be God. His miracles will be so deceptive that Jesus warns that the elect of God may even be deceived by his lies and miraculous wonders. The Bible says many will fall away and believe that God is speaking through this man. But the true believers will stand their ground, and hold on to their faith in Jesus Christ, even under terrible persecution and beheading. And they will be the ones better off in the end and be resurrected, when Jesus Christ returns. For the slaughter of the Christians, God will pour out his judgment, and cause a terribly painful sore, to appear on those, who have taken the mark or worship the Antichrist's image. The original Greek, describes this sore, as a foul, and malignant, ulcerated sore, or an evil, poisoning wound. It will appear, like boils, all over their bodies. And the pain, will be so bad, that they will cry out in agony, with no relief. This will be part of God's judgment, for turning on the Christians and putting them to death. The Bible, says that the Antichrist, will proclaim that he is God. No doubt, he will claim that judgment day has come. And he is judging the world, by putting Christians and Jews to death, for blasphemy. With his army, he will conquer Jerusalem, and take over the Jewish temple. He will sit down in God's temple, proclaiming that he is God. The Bible, in 2 Thessalonians 2 4 says, He will oppose every so-called God, or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple, and claim to be God. Daniel 11:31 says, He will send troops to pollute the temple and the fortress, and he will stop the daily sacrifices. Then he will set up that horrible thing that causes destruction. Daniel 12:11 says, From the time the daily burnt offering is taken away, and the disgusting thing, that causes destruction, is set up, there will be 1,290 days. This horrible thing, is called the abomination, which causes desolation. God says, it will sit there 1,290 days. Then Jesus will appear from heaven to wage war, against the Antichrist. 
who will have deceived the whole world, into believing he was God, through his satanic miracles. The Shiite Muslims, claim that their Mahdi, will rule from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And the Bible states emphatically that he is the Antichrist, who will sit in God's Temple. Joel Richardson, who has written extensively, about the coming Islamic Antichrist, states that the Prime Minister of Turkey, Recep Erdogan, is paving the way for the Antichrist. As he is trying to revive the Ottoman Caliphate, in Turkey. The resurrection of the Ottoman Caliphate, could describe the beast, whose deadly wound was yield. And after which the whole world will be amazed, seeing an old Middle East empire, restored. The Tugra, was the personal seal of the Ottoman Caliphs. And every Ottoman Caliph had his personal seal designed in the same pattern. The Tugra consists of the name of the father and the son, the ruling Caliph. And the words forever victorious. A triple S, has always been considered, an occult mystery Babylonian way, of writing the 666. Interestingly, a triple S, can clearly be seen, in the seal of the Ottomans. If the mark, is to be stamped on the skin of the forehead, or hand, it doesn't necessarily have to be a permanent tattoo. Although, it may very well be. But Muslims have been using henna tattoos for hundreds of years. So it's possible, that henna may be used, as the means by which these marks, are stamped on the skin. But the mark, may also take the form of a badge, to be worn on the forehead or right arm. As the word for mark, which is sharagma, can also mean a badge, of servitude. It must also be noted, that the Taliban have also been trying to revive the Islamic Caliphate, in Iraq. And, the President of Iran, is making himself the personal spokesman for the Mahdi, the Islamic Messiah. As the Quran teaches, that the Mahdi will emerge out of chaos. So the Iranian president, has made it his mission, to create this chaos, so that the Mahdi will appear, and bring on the Day of Judgment. Jesus said that oaths, and pledges, come from Satan himself. This includes swearing on a Bible in court. No wonder the Antichrist, requires people to swear, an oath of allegiance to him. Jesus said in Matthew 5:34, But I say to you, take no oaths at all. But let your words be simply, yes or no, and whatever is more than these, is of the evil one. So to recap, do not take the bayah, the oath of allegiance to the Mahdi or Caliph who claims to be God. And utters blasphemies against Jesus Christ, even denying him as the Son of God. Do not take the mark of his empire, as a stamp on your forehead or hand. Or wear his mark, as a badge on your forehead or right arm. And do not worship the image which he sets up, even though it speaks, and you may be put to death, or imprisoned, because of your refusal to bow to it. Rather believe, in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, for your sins. Call upon his name and you shall be saved. Only Jesus, has the power to save. His name, is the only one, in all the world that can save anyone. For the original name of Jesus, in Hebrew, is, Yeshua. Which means, salvation. And salvation, is found in no other. So cry out to God today, in the name of his son Yeshua. Believe in what he did for you on the cross, and you shall be, saved. John 3:16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Please pray this prayer today Father God I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins I believe that he died and was resurrected and is coming back to judge the living and the dead Father I repent Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, and make me, your child. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have said this prayer, you are now, a child of God. Please go and find a born-again, Christian church, where you can have fellowship, with other believers. Thank you for listening. Please see, our other broadcasts, on the end days.
This program has no copyright and may be distributed freely. The Islamic Antichrist book by John Preacher contains astounding insights into the book of Revelation and it's available for free and can be downloaded from the address below. For more books and videos on the Islamic Antichrist, visit Joel Richardson's website www.joelstrumpet.com The first four trumpets sounded and they brought judgment upon the western part of the Roman Empire. Now the scene changes when we go to Revelation 9. The scene changes from Western Europe to the Middle East and the North African section of the old Roman Empire. Before the sounding of the fifth trumpet, there's a stern warning in Revelation 8. The next three trumpets are known as the three woes. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Rome was a people steeped in idolatry and superstition. For all their professing to be Christian, their worship was a worship for the most part directed towards the mother of our Lord. It was full of idols, images, icons, and false doctrines. After the great religious schism or division, most of the area was either Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox. The Eastern Orthodox Church is virtually Catholicism without having the papal hierarchy. Although these two professing faiths had the name of Christian, they had no real faith. It is just like what's in our own land today, an outward observance of man-made traditions and rituals. The previous trumpet brought judgment on the seas, rivers, grass, trees, and earth. But the fifth trumpet brought judgment upon man. All of the symbols that you see in these opening twelve verses of Revelation 9 all point to Arabia. They all point to violence. They all point to warfare. This will become crystal clear as we proceed. Now I will pose you a question. Was there any major disturbance or any major upheaval in that region of the Middle East or Arabia in the 7th century? Yes, there was. It was the rise of Muhammad's new religion of Islam. If I asked you about the 20th century, you'd probably say communism. However, in the 7th century, any secular history book will confirm that the starting of Islam was the major event that happened in the early 600s. It was the birth of Islam, the start of this new religion which we have with us to this very day. The Arab people of the region are the descendants of our father Abraham through his son Ishmael, whom he bore through the bondwoman Hagar. If you remember, Abraham's wife Sarah was childless. Sarah told Abraham to take her servant girl as a concubine, because they could not wait for God to produce Isaac. They had to try their own hands at things, and they didn't want to wait for God. And what a mess we're living with today. The bondwoman Hagar produced Ishmael, and fourteen years later Sarah produced Isaac. When Sarah saw Ishmael mocking her son Isaac, his half-brother, she insisted that Abraham cast out Ishmael and his slave mother. Abraham reluctantly yielded and sent them off after providing them with bread and a bottle of water. Ishmael was about to die of thirst when the angel showed his mother a well. At the same time, the angel said the tribe of Ishmael would become a great nation. According to Josephus, the ancient Jewish historian, the descendants of Ishmael would be a wild and warlike people. They would be multitudinous people of twelve princes, tribes, or groupings, which we have right up to this present day. Now what about Muhammad? What do we know about him? Muhammad's father was Abdallah, who died soon after his son's birth. At the age of six, Muhammad lost his mother and he was thereafter taken care of by his uncle. He spent his early life as a shepherd and an attendant of the caravans, and at the age of twenty-five he married a rich widow who was fifteen years his senior. She bore him six children, all of whom died at a very young age except Fatima, his beloved daughter. Muhammad claimed direct descendants from Ishmael, and his family was the guardian of the sacred black stone or Kaaba. Now the Kaaba is still there in the big mosque in Mecca to this very day. The Muslims go on the Hajj, or a pilgrimage, and they kiss this black old stone. However, before there was ever Islam, the black meteorite stone was there for years and they worshipped it as pagans. These people were very pagan, and Mecca was a city given over to idols and their greatest object of worship was the moon god Allah. If you look at any Muslim flag today, such as the Egyptian, Pakistani, Turkish flags, they all have the crescent moon as a symbol. 
the crescent moon and the star appear in so many of these islamic flags because mecca was the root of this pagan god worship on his commercial journeys to syria and palestine muhammad became acquainted with and acquired an imperfect knowledge of jewish and christian beliefs and traditions in his fortieth year in six twelve muhammad claimed to have a vision of an angel while praying in the mountains this angel who they claimed was gabriel told him to start the new religion of islam people will tell you today that islam means a way of peace not so it actually means the way of submission and there this spirit supposedly dictated to him the words that are now collected in the Quran, which is the holy book of the Muslims. Let us look now at Revelation 9 verse 1. And a fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now a whole lot of people have speculated who this star might be in this verse. Some people have said it was Muhammad himself, while others have suggested it might symbolize the overthrow of paganism in the Roman Empire. It's not. The fallen star is Satan, or Lucifer, our adversary. He wants to hurt and harm us, and he is also behind all the evil in this world, including false religions. If he cannot destroy God's people from afar, he will work within to lead people to destruction by means of false traditions and vain worship. He is the master deceiver. You see, it doesn't say John saw a star falling from heaven. The original Greek in verse 1 says, I saw a star that had already fallen from heaven. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. If you want the contradiction or the comparison, the Lord Jesus is the bright and morning star, but Satan is the fallen star. The prophet Isaiah gives us further insight. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? John sees him fall from heaven, and the earth is now the scene of his activity. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, the devil is called the prince of the power of the air. Satan is in our midst, which is why we are having trouble today. He is going forth like a raging lion because he knows his time is short. Jesus bruised Satan when he died and rose from the dead. Satan's defeat is written. But he is not bound yet. We have to wait until Christ returns. Now this bottomless pit is also rendered from the Greek as the abyss. The abyss is the home of the evil spirits, and it is the utter darkness into which they will ultimately be cast. Do you remember the demons that Jesus cast out of the herd of pigs in Matthew chapter 8? And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They said, don't send us to the abyss before our time. They know their ultimate destiny, and they requested of Jesus, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. But this supreme one, this fallen star, he has the key to the bottomless pit. Now we know that the keys are prominent in the symbolism and heraldry of papal Rome, but they also figure in Islam. And so according to the Quran, they claim Muhammad was given the power of heaven and the fire below. And as the divine porter, he might open to those whom he had chosen. The armies of Islam swept out of the desert of Arabia with the keys emblazoned on their flags and heraldry. The Islamic Alhambra in Granada, Spain, has the key engraved on its architecture as the symbol of their authority. As with Rome, the key is tied in with Islamic symbolism. Now we want to see who this angel was that apparently came to Muhammad. We want to see who this dark spirit is. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 11 says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now those two names identify him as the angel of the bottomless pit, and the name literally means the destroyer. So once again it is Satan, and I remind you that Ephesians chapter 6 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So when we see these false religions and we do battle with them, we are doing battle with dark spiritual powers. The prophet Daniel even spoke about the angel or the demon spirit of Persia that withheld the message from coming to him. So these evil spirits are still at work today and when we are attacked, we are being attacked by dark powers even though they operate through other people. Behind them are the legions of Satan trying to destroy the people of God. 
Jesus warns us in Matthew 24 that false prophets would arise. Jesus actually told us where Muhammad would start his religion. Habe. La 
idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die Idee besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper. At least ten or better hundred. Bitcoin adressen in papier ausdrucken. Um, mínimo cien o a pesar de las hundred. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, And the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. O maybe a tip in a restaurant. O la trinkelt en restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, uh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener. Tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. 
Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, ciao, das ist der private Schlüssel. Ähm, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel mit Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma, das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo.